Now, we are fast approaching the season of overeating and overspending. It's no wonder our New Year's resolutions are often to lose weight and save some money. On Coffee Group, we are talking about avoiding overindulging with Rachel King and Tui Fleming. Morning to you both. Morning. Morning. Tui, let's start with you. It's a bit of a vicious <coughs> cycle, isn't it? I mean, why do we feel the need to eat, drink and spend to ex excess at Christmas? Well, we want to let our hair down and be merry, don't we? And I think that's that's one of the key reasons, um, is overwhelm. During the year, we get so overwhelmed during the year that Christmas actually becomes a time for release. And that can show up in the form of indulgence or overindulgence, as the case may be. But I think the other thing, there's a, a couple of other reasons as well. Um, it can be a really tough and sorrowful time for some people, mm. you know, people who have lost loved ones during the year. So the eating, the drinking, the spending, that actually is a form of distraction, isn't it, and a form of comfort mm. for those people. Um, and then expectations, societal norms, it's just what we do at Christmas time. But I think we're starting to see the tide turn, aren't we, in terms of people being more clued up around moderation and well-being. Yeah, and also there are a lot of parties, you're invited to a lot of things, so it <coughs> is easier to overindulge. Um, Rachel, it's the time of year two when we tend to accumulate a lot of stuff. We've had conversations about stuff <laughs> before. Have. So, I mean, how do we avoid that? Well, I think the key is to have a plan. If you go, if you leave it to the last minute and you go to the shops to get your, do your Christmas shopping, it's you're gonna, guilty. you're gonna buy ridiculous things that you don't really need or want for yourself or for anybody mm. else. So, um, a great little checklist for when, if you're shopping for kids is something they want, something they need, something to wear, something to read. Um, and I'm not saying that you need to stick to that as a little measure of four, but if you can use that as a bit of a guide because that guide will just help rein in, mm. you know, the excess. Yeah. And another thing is to avoid just buying stuff because it's on sale. Mm. The retailers go nuts with the sales at this time of year, and if you just buy anything that's on sale, you will definitely end up with too much. I really like that about the kids too, because quite often you end up thinking, I just want them to have full Christmas <laughs> Santa sack, so you buy a lot of tat mm. you do. that they don't need. So that's <clears> a really <throat> nice little saying. I'm going to remember that. Mm. Um, Tui, what kind of conversations do you think we need to have with our kids around Christmas time? Well, it's funny that you were just talking about that because I think the kids are starting to have these conversations themselves. So literally just last week my little seven year old came home and said we were writing at school about Christmas today and we had to write one thing we want, one thing we need and one thing to give away. And so the conversation for us in our household is around the difference between wants and needs and actually cultivating that attitude of gratitude because mm. we have so much stuff and it was such a little perler. My little five year old who was listening and I said well, how would you answer those questions? Questions. And so she told me one thing that she wants, and then she just looked at me with those, you know, sweet five year old innocent eyes and said, But all I really need is my mummy and daddy. <gasps> oh. So and now so she's got to get what she wants. They're starting to get it, you know. Mm. The more that we can kind of give them this great advice and information, I think they're starting to actually kind of be more aware as well. Mm. My problem is that my children all need school shoes like a month before school <laughs> ends. It's like I have to go and buy them, and they want. Yeah, that's difficult. Um, Rachel, what about being environmentally friendly at this time of year? Do you have any tips or tricks on that? Mm. Because it can be a time of excess waste as mm. well. Well, again, I think avoid the two-dollar shops. Avoid mm. the shops like Kmart, where you will inevitably buy far too much because it's cheap. Mm. So I'm not saying that it's wrong to look out for things that are on special. However, you're far more likely to end up with too much stuff that tends, a lot of it goes straight to landfill after yeah. Christmas. And then on the wrapping paper side of things, um, glossy wrapping paper goes straight to landfill. It can't be recycled. And there are some beautiful craft, like brown kind of craft wrapping papers with beautiful patterns. Mm. So on the paper recycling side, go for the craft. It's paper. funny, isn't it, because there's so much waste around the wrapping and everything there else, is. which is my excuse for never wrapping things properly. Same way, you know, environmentally. There we go. Environmentally you are. Great. Um, Tui, what about avoiding stress? What are some triggers that oh. could set people off and what can we do to get through it? So many triggers, but I just think, you know, again, back to the expectations piece, um, all of the triggers just about can be wrapped up under the heading of expectations. And, you know, remember that saying, shoulds are other people's wants. So actually, to not be triggered at Christmas time, it's about getting clear on what you want, what you want to do, who you want to see, where you want to spend your time. And really importantly, a really key question is, how do you want to feel? Because when you get really clear on how you want to feel, you actually can make much more aligned decisions. And I'll give you a little example. So you will find it so much easier to stop saying yes, 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 and um, you know, um, no to the more, more, more demands on you if you know you want to feel, for example, vibrant or playful or free. So when you get really clear on how you want to feel, your behaviour will align with that and you'll make better decisions, which are 
less mm. stress decisions. Yeah, that's great. Great advice. Also, I was just thinking, uh, extended um, extended family can be, you know, lovely, but also mm, a little bit trying mm. around that Christmas too. Mm. Um, do you have a final tip for us, Rachel? Well, I think on the overindulgence and overeating and that side of things, it's again what Tu was saying. Thinking about what you want, so being mindful about like enjoying yourself at <coughs> Christmas time, enjoying what you eat and. Um, and celebrating, it's a time to celebrate, but also being mindful and thoughtful so that you can enjoy it without having a total blowout. Yeah. Mm. Think about what you're doing. Hey, great having you in the studio as well. Merry, I can always say that, can't I? Merry Christmas yeah. to you. <laughs> just about, no, I won't do that just yet. Oh, thank you both very much. Thank you.